Hi guys, I'm Paul from Russell Fraser Sales. I'm just going to take you on a quick tour of what's in the kit and a quick demonstration of how to use the Cygnus Intrinsically Safe. So this is the kit. We open it up. We've got the usual items. So this is our calibration certificate and user manual. Uh, we have our charging unit. We have two intrinsically safe batteries. We have the main body of the unit. This is our probe, which does the actual measurement. Uh, so that's our probe. This is a jumper cable for connecting the battery during calibration. A Tommy bar to help loosen the, the probe if you need to get it out. A bottle of couplant. Membrane couplant. And here we have some spare O-rings, screwdriver. Uh, these are spare membranes and a membrane key. Uh, some more O-rings, a test block, a 15 millimeter test block, and keys for the carry case. Okay. So looking at the probe itself, this is the contact face. There is a protective membrane on the front here and a knurled ring holding that in place. Uh, and this is the cone that connects into the main unit. There is an O-ring around here as well. Uh, it's very important to note the O-ring is actually on the surface here, not out here. A lot of people make that mistake. This is the main body of the unit. Uh, there's only a single switch on it. There is a couple more buttons and a screw underneath here. That's with calibration. And finally, the batteries. Pretty self-explanatory, that one. So here we have the three main parts. So to put it together, it's just a matter of first connecting the cone of the probe to the body. Like so. If it only needs to be hand tightened, but if you're having trouble getting it off at the end of the day, the Tommy bar can be inserted through the hole here. Makes it a bit easier to get a bit of torque on it. Uh, and then finally, once you've got the probe on, the battery will connect to the bottom. Once again, it just needs to be hand tight to turn it on, it just press the button on the side. That's ready for operation. To turn it off again, just press the same button. So the general principle for an ultrasonic thickness gauge and all thickness gauges is relatively simple. The probe will emit ultrasound, which will be emitted from here. There's a crystal inside which will vibrate. Uh, the ones you have vibrate at 2.25 megahertz. The sound will travel out of the probe into your part. For example, let's say this. Uh, it will travel from the part through, hit the back wall and be reflected and it will then travel back where the echo will be detected by the crystal again. Now, the amount of time it takes to travel down and back is directly related to its thickness. If the gauge knows the ultrasonic velocity of the material, which in steel is around 5,930 meters a second, it can very accurately calculate the thickness of that material. It's very similar to yelling echo into a canyon and listening for the response. Unlike yelling, ultrasound does not travel through air very well. So as a result, you need to use what's known as coupling. You have a bottle here. You can also use oil or water if absolutely necessary. Just anything that will remove the air between the probe and the part. It's just simply a matter of putting a little bit of coupling on your block or your sample or whatever it is you're measuring. Doesn't need to be very much, just needs to remove the air. That leaves a good signal for the sound to travel from the probe. Here I have a step wedge. Travel from the probe into the part and the sound will then travel down hit this back wall, echo back, and it measures the response time. And it converts that, depending on the velocity you've set, to convert that into a thickness. So at the moment it's reading 25.1 mil. Next block down is 20, 15, should be 10, and five. The couplet you provided is water washable, so it's very easy to remove. Uh, but it is very important that you use it. If you don't use any couplet, you won't get a reading. It's quite simply that simple. Same principle applies as under the membrane. If you've got air trapped under the membrane, it's the same.
So the calibration of these units is fairly simple. You'll want to do this before you go to site. This has to be done in a safe place as it requires removing the battery from the unit, which is not intrinsically safe, which is why you have to do it in a safe place. Uh, you really only need two things, three things, I guess, if you want to use the cow block uh, or your test block, which is in here. Fifth, that's a 15 millimeter test block. Uh, you'll need your jumper cable, which is just a cable for connecting the battery without actually having to screw it in place. Uh, one end goes into the Lemo connector in the battery. The other end goes into the Lemo connector on the bottom of the gauge. It allows you to power on the unit without actually screwing the battery in. It gives you access to the controls hidden underneath here. So what we want to do is check the velocity of the unit. So different materials conduct sound at different speeds. Steel conducts sound around about 5,930 meters per second. Uh, it will depend, it will vary a little bit depending on the composition and temperature and things like that, but that's a general ballpark figure. Uh, if we want to check that, it does say it during the boot up of the unit, but if you press and hold the power button when it boots up, it will keep it displayed. So I've just calibrated this unit, so it's now set to 5,965 meters a second. But if I wanted to change that, simply take this screwdriver, put it into the screw underneath here, and turning that screw will adjust the velocity. So I'll put that in place and turn the screw, you can see the velocity changing. So that velocity now is closer to that of aluminium. So I'm just going to take it back to 5965, which is what I had it on before. Press the button again to put it into read mode. And now I can take a few reference readings on this block. So this should read 25. Yep, it's simply a rounding error. 20, 15, 10, and 5. Now if I didn't know the velocity of the, the material, I can calibrate to a known thickness. Very similar process, it's just a matter of putting the probe on the sample and then adjusting the screw until you get the right thickness that you're looking for. As well as that, there is another control underneath. There is a small button you can press. This takes you through some of the other settings of the gauge. So you have, first setting is the probe. So that is the frequency of the probe in use. This, you guys have been provided with S2C probes. S means single crystal. 2 means 2.25 megahertz, which is what this is saying, 2.24, and C is the size of the probe, 13 millimeter. Uh, pressing the button underneath again, put it into gain, that is almost like volume control. Uh, if you have a probe which is not working properly, you can turn up the gain to increase the signal, uh, but it's not something I'd recommend if your gauge is working properly as it can give false readings. You are the unit that's currently set to Euro or metric. You can also change it to Imperial by pressing the button on the side here. And low res means it's doing it to one decimal place as opposed to two. Changing that again, we'll change it to high res, which will now give two decimal places on your readings. So it's very important with this to have the membrane fitted properly. Probably 95% of the time I get a call saying a Cygnus unit isn't working. The unit's fine, they just haven't installed the membrane properly. Probably means there's air trapped underneath it. So as you can see in these images, there are lighter and darker sections under the membrane. It should all be dark. The lighter sections are where there's air trapped underneath. So all you gotta do is take it off. Make sure there's some of the membrane couplet underneath, which is just this little bottle. Just a drop or two on the surface. and put the membrane back on. So when you put it on, you want to put your thumb over the surface and squeeze, and then tighten it up. And that will squeeze all the air out from underneath. And then you'll have a nice clean surface without any air bubbles in it. Now, if you do that and the air instantly comes back, it probably means the membrane's worn out and needs to be replaced. That's quite simple. You've got some spares in here. Let's take the ring off. Get your membrane key, which is this 
metal item that will just insert into the ring. So this is the front, and this is the back. So you put in the back, you'll see the two notches in the inner locking ring. That key will lock into it, and then you can use it to release and unscrew the inner ring. Which will just come out. And that will make the membrane now easily removed. Which you won't be able to see that on the camera, but you will get the point. Um, all you got to do is get a new one. I'm just going to put this one back in because it's brand new. Put it in, push it all the way in. There's a little slot at the very front of the ring for it to lock into. Replace the locking ring. Make sure that's tight. In place. membrane couplet on the surface and just replace the knurled ring. Again, thumb over the surface to squeeze the air out. And there we go. That's all there is to it. Charging the batteries is relatively simple. Uh, you have your standard power cord, figure out power cord. That will just plug straight into the back of the charger here. I'm sure I don't need to explain that one to you. As to the other end, it has this small Limo connector that simply plugs into the battery, like so. Plug that in, it will light up. There is a series of lights, either yellow or green. Instructions on the back as to what that means. So one of the best features of Cygnus gauges is a function known as through coating measurement which means it will ignore coatings like paint and just measure the material underneath. So here I have a sample of an 8.1 mil steel block with various coatings of various thicknesses on it. You can just make that out. Um, I'm not sure how thick these are, we're just gonna do these first three. So if I put it on the first sample, bare steel, so we have a reading of 8.05. I put it on this first coating, still reads 8.05. Second coating, eight, and the last coating, 8.1. Just simply a little bit of variance, but as you can see, they are quite a bit thicker than 0.1 of a mil. It has ignored the coating completely. So this has been the instructional video for the Cygnus One Intrinsically Safe. If you have any additional questions, please consult the user manual, or alternatively, feel free to call us at Russell Fraser Sales.